So today we will be taking a look at another wood stone bridge experiment. So for this experiment, we are determining the resistance of a wire as a function of its cross section. So these are task, and also we calculate the resistivities of the wire. Okay, resistivities of the wire. So that's. So that is our aim of this experiment. So now let's take a look at the theory. Okay, so in the previous video, I derived how this came about. So let me quickly take you through and then this is supposed to be the theory of the experiment. It's quite long, so this is supposed to be the theory. Okay, first of all, we say that the resistance of a wire depends on three things of a wire so let's say if you have this wire right the resistance of this wire depends on three things one the length which is l the next thing is the cross-sectional area okay so you can measure the diameter of the wire the diameter then you find the radius from the diameter we divide the diameter by two to find the radius right and then we can find the area so we say that the area is supposed to be let me just write it here say that the area is supposed to be pi pi r squared okay so when you find the diameter of that particular area we can divide by two to get the radius and then we find the area okay so that's just by the way and then three the resistivity okay so this is the third thing that's the resistivity so we said the area is supposed to be pi r squared so that's how you find the area okay so the table is supposed to look something like this this is how the table for the experiment is supposed to look like right for this particular experiment okay this is how the table looks like so one is the d okay the d is the diameter of the various wires so we can use the micrometer screw gauge to measure the diameter of the wires. And then the unit is in millimeters, so we can convert it to meters. The next thing is the resistance, right? So the resistance of the wires, right? So we do that. So the Rx, right? The inverse of it. So the next thing should be the area by using the we use the uh, pi r squared. We use this to find the area. Also, the length of the wires. So E, the area over the length of the wires. Now, now, when we look at this, right? When we look at this, we are saying that the conductivity of a wire is represented by this. We call it sigma. Sigma. It has this kind of inverted E, right? Sigma. Okay. Now, also, the conductivity of a wire is also equal to one over the resistivity. You get it. The conductivity of that wire can also be represented by one over the resistivity. So, in case you are supposed to find the conductivity of a wire. And then you have the resistivity, you can just take the inverse of that one. The inverse of that should give you the conductivity. Or if you don't have the resistivity and you have the area, the resistance, and then the length, you have these three things. Then you can find the conductivity of a wire. Okay, so this is some basic formulas we need to know. Okay, so we make use of this. We we'll make use of it because we are supposed to find conductivity right we are finding conductivity and then resistance okay we are finding conductivity okay so that's so that's just by the way okay so this is how the table is supposed to look like now the theory we did how we derive this 
from the previous experiment. Let me bring it. So if you, if you watch the other video, experiment one, you see how we came by all this using this circuit. Okay, so let me just jump. So after all this, we divide this equation, right? We divide this by this, okay? Then we'll come and get an expression like this. Then we can say that if this is L, right? We can make R as the subject and get this from the previous experiment like this, okay? So this is about the theory. Now, L over L is still L, so we can just represent it by one L. But there's a formula that includes conductivity, okay? We want conductivity. So the resistance of a wire, okay, can also be the length over the conductivity times the area. You see? So we can, for here, we said conductivity equals to one over the resistivity or the length over the resistance times area. Conductivity is also, sorry, resistance is also equal to the length over the conductivity times the area, right? So we call this sigma. So that's the whole thing we have done here, right? That's the whole thing we have done here. So, so this becomes this now becomes our formula. Okay, R x equals to the length, conductivity, and the area, right? Now, they said we should plot. The book says that we should plot. We are plotting. 1 over Rx against A over the length. Okay, so since we are plotting this against this, what we do next is that we can take the inverse of this. Now, this is the equation we arrived at. So we take the inverse of this, this will also change. Then we have the whole of this. Okay, so now 1 over Rx will become sigma, the area, over the length. Now, since we are plotting this against this, we can now separate the whole of this and then compare to equation of a straight line, okay? So we have this as our y component, right? And then we are plotting this on our x as is, or let me say x component so this becomes our slope okay so that's y and this our x and this our slope now our slope is the conductivity our slope now becomes our conductivity so we need to find our conductivity now the unit for conductivity is supposed to be ohm per meter right ohm per meter ohm per meter it's from here so from here, realize that the unit for this, this is meters, this is meter squared, right? So this is plus one. When we make this linear, this becomes minus two. So one will cancel this, right? And then to be ohm, because this has ohm as the unit. So it will be ohm per meter when you make it. Okay, so that's how the unit. So the unit for conductivity is this. Now, after plotting one over Rx, where the unit is ohm per meter and then 1 over rx the unit is per ohm okay per ohm for the 1 over rx and then a the area over l after plotting this we are expected to get a straight line so you get a straight line okay then from there we find our slope so we can find our slope, right? We find our slope. Now, from the theory, from the theory, we said that our slope is equal to the conductivity, right? So the conductivity 
of the material or the wire becomes our slope, the value of the slope, where the unit is ohm per meter. Okay. So to find the resistivity, we take the inverse of this. So under calculation, you find the slope, then equate it, the slope, the value of the slope to the conductivity in the respective or appropriate unit. Then we can take the inverse of the conductivity, this sigma, resistivity equals one over sigma to get our resistivity, okay? So that's for the Wheatstone Bridge experiment, okay? Thank you very much.